What's up guys, this is Vinyl like Puma, and today I'd like to go over 10 of what I think are among some of the best pistols and revolvers in Borderlands history. Now before we start, this video will include pistols and revolvers from across all the main series games. So that means Borderlands 1's pistols and revolvers are going to be put together and compared with some of the best pistols that both Borderlands 2 as well as the pre-sequel have to offer. I should also admit that there are so many great pistols on this list that there is a good chance that you may have pistols or revolvers from each of the various games that you like that don't appear here. And that's not necessarily because those weapons are bad, but again, like I said, there are just so many great pistols from all three of the main series games. And as always, feel free to leave a comment below on your favorites if they don't happen to make the list. However, without further ado, I am pleased to present what I think are the top 10 best pistols and revolvers in Borderlands history, starting now. Number 10. The Infinity Pistol from Borderlands 2 While the Borderlands franchise is no stranger to infinite ammo weapons, as the dev from the original Borderlands beat the Infinity Pistol to the punch, I think we can all agree that for what it is, the Infinity Pistol is a pretty fantastic weapon especially in Borderlands 2, where most of the characters don't really have any reliable way to regenerate their own ammo. Otherwise, the Infinity has pretty decent damage and pretty good fire rates. Granted, the fire rate isn't as high as the Vladov Anarchist or the Vladov Stinger, but I think the infinite ammo more than makes up for that. This weapon tends to be a popular choice for some characters and builds as well. Quite a few Zero players like this weapon because of its synergy with his one-shot, one-kill skill. And because the Infinity is always firing the first shot in the magazine, the bonus from one-shot, one-kill always remains active. Plus, the Infinity is also popular on Axton if you have a Heavy Gunner class mod and a Sheriff's Badge. Because you're going to be getting a plus six bonus to Metal Storm and at 11 out of 5, and when you combine that with the fire rate bonuses provided with the Sheriff's Badge, it's actually possible to get this weapon to fire rate cap on the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of the game. While I wouldn't say it's the best pistol in Borderlands 2, it's definitely up there, and if you want one, you can farm one from Doc Mercy during or after the Medical Mystery side quest located in Three Horns Valley. Number 9. The Firehawk Pistol from Borderlands 1 the Firehawk Pistol has got to be one of my favorite weapons in Borderlands 1. In fact, it's kind of a shame that the weapon didn't return in Borderlands 2, because in concept it's supposed to be more like the Hellfire is, in the sense that the weapon was primarily focused around damage over time effects. According to the Borderlands wiki, the Firehawk is unique in the sense that it has a very powerful proc. Provided you have a Times 4 variant of the Firehawk, it's supposedly equivalent damage-wise to what would theoretically be a Times 6 proc. What's also pretty great about the Firehawk is that it receives a damage boost from its unique accessory as well as a decrease to its projectile spread, which makes the weapon more powerful than normal and also makes it more accurate than normal. I like this weapon because it reminds me of the Infection from Borderlands 2. Having a weapon that has really high damage over time is really fun to use, and it's nice to see one working well. After all, Borderlands 2's Infection got a lot worse once Ultimate Vault Hunter mode came out, and enemies could just regenerate through the damage over time. Really, I'd say if you're looking for an alternative to the Hellfire in Borderlands 1 and you want to use a pistol, this would be a great choice. And if you want a Firehawk, they can only be obtained in Borderlands 1 and should drop from any suitable loot source. Number 8. The Lady Fist from Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel So, the Lady Fist is a popular choice for many Borderlands 2 players. While the base damage is pretty low, this weapon becomes immensely powerful provided you can perform critical hits consistently. This is because the Lady Fist has greatly enhanced critical hit damage bonus, which is listed at 800% on the item card, and as you can imagine, this is absolutely amazing. What also makes this weapon very powerful is the fact that the Lady Fist's boost to critical hit bonus is passive. On most characters, you can use this in conjunction with the Twister to massively boost the critical hit damage of the Twister, 
or any other slow-moving projectile weapons. However, like most other weapons with passive effects, Salvador just so happens to be able to take advantage of this crit-boosting ability the best, and can use it to great effect. For that reason, many Salvador players that do a lot of raid boss fights will equip this weapon in the offhand to get a massive crit boost and then swap back to the grog nozzle to quickly heal up and maintain their DPS. Now it's worth mentioning that the Lady Fist does exist and can be obtained for use in the pre-sequel, however the issue is is that it doesn't appear to drop in game due to a bug, and with that in mind you can still use this weapon in the pre-sequel provided you know someone that has it or if you're willing to tweak around with save editors. With that in mind, I suppose an argument could be made that the Lady Fist is officially at least a Borderlands 2 exclusive. And if you want one, it can be obtained by siding with Unabaha during the Uncle Teddy side quest that's located in the arid Nexus Badlands. Number 7. The Unforgiven Revolver from Borderlands 1. Ah, the Unforgiven. While it has a reputation for being a god-awful weapon in Borderlands 2, the Unforgiven in the original Borderlands is actually a really great revolver, if not one of the best revolvers in the game. While it may suffer from decreased fire rate and increased recoil, the Unforgiven gains a significant boost to its base damage, critical hit damage, and also gets decreased projectile spread. What's also pretty great about the Unforgiven is that like other revolvers, it can come with the Masher accessory, which basically allows the Unforgiven to fire a lot of projectiles like the Maggie from Borderlands 2 does. As you might imagine, a critical from all seven of these projectiles is extremely deadly, especially on someone like Mordecai provided you heavily invest in his gunslinger tree. Ultimately though, I think you'll find that the original Unforgiven is drastically better than the Borderlands 2 Perlescent remake. After all, having a revolver shotgun that hits like a truck is better than a weapon that seemingly had its fire rate purposely nerfed. If you want the Unforgiven though, you can acquire one from any suitable loot source in Borderlands 1. Just keep an eye out for the Masher variant as those tend to be the best variants available. Number 6. The Grog Nozzle Pistol from Borderlands 2 While the Grog Nozzle is one of the weaker weapons in the game, the Grog Nozzle definitely makes up for it thanks to its numerous abilities and the passive effects that it can apply to other weapons. As a moxie weapon, the Grog Nozzle has the highest percentage healing from damage dealt, clocking in at a whopping 65%. The closest contender to this is the Ruby, which only heals at about 12%, and most other Moxie weapons heal anywhere from about 3 to 6%, which makes the Grog Nozzle's healing capabilities pretty overpowered. However, things get even more insane when you account for the fact that this effect, along with the crit boosting effect, are passive, meaning that you can heal off of and enhance the critical hit bonus of damage applied with other weapons. Perhaps the best part about the Grog Nozzle though is the Drunk Effect. What this does is causes the player to see a decrease in their fire rate while also tilting from side to side in exchange for the ability to fire an additional 5 projectiles at no additional ammo cost. As you can imagine, this is insanely powerful when combined with any weapon, but starts to get pretty crazy once it's combined with weapons like the Norfleet or even the Unkempt Herald. All you have to do to get this weapon is to start a side quest in the Dragon Keep DLC called The Beard Makes the Man and then simply never complete it. As long as you're playing by yourself or if you're the host, the Grog Nozzle will be available for all the players in your game to use. Otherwise, if you want it to be more permanent, you'll have to trade with someone that has obtained one through the $100,000 Loot Hunt event or you're just going to have to obtain it by using a save editor. Number 5. The Gunnerang and Shooterang Pistols from Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel This next entry will be interesting because while both the Gunnerang and Shooterang are popular choices in both Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel respectively, they are popular for different reasons despite their similarities. When it comes to their similarities, both of these pistols are TDR weapons that act like boomerangs when reloaded. However, the reason the Gunnerang is popular in Borderlands 2 is because of its massive reload damage potential, while the Shooterang is popular in the pre-sequel for its high base damage while fired in a more conventional fashion. 
In Borderlands 2, the Gunnerang just so happens to be one of, if not the strongest TDR weapons available, and is definitely up there when compared to weapons like the Baby Maker and Avenger. While it's terrible for encounters up against a multitude of enemies, the Gunnerang excels when it comes to one-on-one -on -one fights with raid bosses and can deal a lot of damage when going up against them. With this in mind, the Gunnerang is a great weapon for any TDR-centric build, and if you're interested in the Gunnerang, you can acquire one from Rackman in the fridge once you've completed the Cold Shoulder side quest. As for the pre-sequel, the Shooterang has pretty great stats all around and has great base damage, which makes it great for dealing a lot of damage when fired conventionally. When dual wielded on Nisha, it's actually fairly impressive how much damage the Shooterang can deal this way. And while I would say the reload isn't quite as useful on the Shooterang as it is on the Gunnerang, I'd say it's better to have it than to not have it. Unlike the Gunnerang though, the Shooterang is obtained from any suitable loot source in the pre-sequel. Number 4. The Fibber Pistol from Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel the Fibber is a pretty bizarre weapon that has multiple different barrels that affect the weapon's properties. The first Fibber barrel is known as the Shotgun Fibber and as the name implies, it fires a volley of slow moving projectiles. The best way to tell that you have this version is that it has a projectile multiplier of 1 and as you might guess, this version of the weapon is often considered to be the worst variant. The second Fibber barrel is known as the Crit Fibber. This version of the Fibber is characterized by extremely low damage and extraordinarily high critical hit bonus, and you'll know that you have this version if the projectiles look like orbs and have a slight arc to them. The Crit Fibber is a pretty great weapon and may be worth looking into if you're looking for an alternative to the Lady Fist. The final Fibber Barrel is what's being shown in this video, and it's known as the Ricochet Fibber. What's special about this version is that the initial projectile can ricochet off of surfaces and then result in considerably more projectiles. This property makes the Ricochet Fibber the best variant, as it not only goes well with the B-Shield, but it also goes well with gauges close enough and anarchy skills. Like the Lady Fist though, there's not really a definite consensus on how this weapon is obtained in the pre-sequel, and at the moment, it could be considered a Borderlands 2 exclusive weapon. However, it is worth mentioning that the Fibber can be used in both games, and if you would like this weapon in the pre-sequel, your best bet is to obtain it from somebody that already has it. As for Borderlands 2, you receive the Fibber by completing the A Real Boy questline located in the Iridium Blight. Number 3. The Nemesis Invader Hybrid Pistol from Borderlands 1 so, the Nemesis Invader Hybrid is an awesome pistol from Borderlands 1 because it combines the unique properties of the Invader Scope with the Nemesis Accessory. Not to be confused with the Invader Sniper, the Invader Repeater Pistol has a unique scope that unloads the entire magazine while scoped and also provides a decent boost to the weapon's fire rate. The Nemesis Accessory, on the other hand, makes the weapon shock elemental and it also causes the weapon to occasionally fire corrosive projectiles, while also enhancing damage and reducing projectile spread. These two effects end up going really well together because the Invader Scope greatly improves the DPS of the Nemesis, while the Nemesis's own inherent effect of firing occasional corrosive projectiles makes enemies more vulnerable to damage. Assuming you can get a corrosive proc while firing this weapon scoped is basically going to wipe out almost whatever is in front of you. The only real lousy thing about this particular variant of the Nemesis is that it's extremely rare. Because it's a hybrid weapon that combines the unique weapon parts of both the Legendary Invader Pistol and the Pearlescent Nemesis Pistol, you have to manage to get the Invader's Barrel to spawn on the Nemesis, and given that Pearlescent Rarity weapons are already pretty rare, you may find acquiring this weapon is incredibly difficult. With that said though, your best bet is going to be to either defeat Badass Defenders, Badass Infantry, Cromorax, or try to obtain this weapon from Crimson Lance Weapon Chests. And if you can manage to get your hands on this weapon, it's definitely worth it. Number 2. The Unkempt Herald Pistol from Borderlands 2 
I'm sure this will surprise virtually no one, but the Unkempt Herald along with its double penetrating variants are quite possibly the best pistols in Borderlands 2. This can be attributed to a number of different factors, but I think the one that's the most important is that the Unkempt Herald fires an additional 7 unlisted projectiles in a relatively tight horizontal spread. The double penetrating versions fire 14 unlisted projectiles, which as you can imagine, leads to even higher damage output. This is a really great weapon across all characters, however I have to admit that it's probably the strongest on Salvador. Provided you spec for money shot, you're using a rough rider to more easily take advantage of the bonus from the inconceivable skill, and you're also dual wielding this weapon with a grog nozzle, and I think you're going to find that you're going to be pretty OP, and you're going to be able to heal insanely fast. If you want an unkempt herald, you can acquire one by farming an NPC named Savage Lee that's located in Three Horns Divide, or your best bet would be to purchase an unkempt herald from one of the Torg vending machines in the Torg DLC. That way you can be sure that you can easily get a double penetrating variant. And finally, the best pistol of them all, number one, the Luck Cannon from Borderlands the Pre-Sequel. While there aren't very many truly unique legendaries in the pre-sequel, I would have to say that one of the best has got to be the Luck Cannon. Not only does this weapon have the awesome looking weapon skin that the Hammer Buster has, but it also has some interesting and unique abilities that make it pretty OP. Aside from boosted base damage and accuracy, the Luck Cannon gains the ability to have the chance of performing a quasi money shot that deals in the neighborhood of 400% more damage, at the exchange of having a magazine size of just one bullet. Hence the name Luck Cannon. One time you might get lucky and deal a crap ton of damage, while another time you might barely deal any. However, where this weapon really starts to come into its own is on Nisha. Not only can Nisha dual wield luck cannons, but she can also increase their magazine size thanks to the Fistful of Bullet skill, which can increase the luck cannon's magazine size by 3 for a total of 4 shots before having to reload. As you can imagine, this greatly increases the potential for the quasi money shots to occur, and because you're dual wielding 2 luck cannons at once, you can achieve some monstrous DPS. If you want to become massively OP, you should really obtain a luck cannon in the pre-sequel, and if you want one of these, I'd say your best bet is to try to get one to drop during the system shutdown quest in the Claptastic Voyage DLC. Otherwise, you're just going to have to try any other suitable loot source. Alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and also feel free to leave a comment with the word Dragoon. While we frequently see Dragoons in video games, I didn't realize that Dragoon was actually a military unit in the real world that was employed in the 17th and 18th centuries. I guess you learn something new every day, but otherwise guys, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.